Namu Myoho Renge Kyo Namu Myoho Renge Kyo Namu Myoho Renge Kyo Hello. Welcome to the Dharma Wheel. All right, here we go. Watch out for the fakes. We're going to start out as we do every reading. Watch out for the fakes. Enough said. I'm not going to come to you in the comments trying to get your money. You got to come to me to give me your money. <laughs> yep, that's right. Um, you schedule your session with me. I don't reach out to you. I even like some fake came to me on Instagram today and I screenshotted their crap and put them up as an example in my stories. This is a fake. Um, I don't do that crap. I don't come into you talking about, hey, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's our reading. This is what I what the spirits have to say. And if you want to schedule your session with me, you got to come to me. Simple as that. Information is down below in the description box. And also the information is on my website. And that information is down below in the description box. You know how to get a hold of me. All right, so you hit me up. We get your session scheduled. And then, you know, we take care of business in your session. All right, so thank you very much. Here we go. Um, 12 cards, 12 signs, 12 houses. The card across from you applies also. The card before and the card after applies. The card across from you is your sister sign's divine eyes. The reading before and the reading after also apply. So, you know, scroll back uh, if you need more information. Also, if I happen to not do a reading that day, then that is a day when you need to scroll in and look... Um, <clears throat> down and find a title that resonates with you for that day because all these readings are timeless and those readings will have a message for you that will come in some other way um, so that way you don't miss out onward <clears throat> here we go this is a very interesting reading today uh, I've been getting lots of messages on different ways that these cards are going to be speaking and sure enough they came out exactly how they were going to say so Aries um, judgment card you've been really judging yourself really hard uh, woo -wee. That's what this card has to show. You've been really messing up your energetic flow with all of uh, the judgments about what you maybe do or do not know, um, or maybe what you can and cannot show. Maybe you feel like you're just not good enough. You feel like you're not tough enough to, uh, you know, take on the task, um, and you're always you know, thinking that you're just going to have to ask yourself if you're good enough. Well, yes, you are. You are, you are. And your skills and, and everything you've put your, you know, put your hard work and effort into is going to get you very, very far. Um, you just don't realize how really powerful you are and how amazing you are, Aries, because you are the fucking star. All right. So it's time for you to look at yourself in a different light. All right. Um, no more getting caught up in all this dark night. Turn the wheel around. No more smiles, or no more, it is now time for no more frowns, okay? Turn that frown upside down. Change your mind, change your life, change your thinking, and it will do away with the strife. What you think about, you bring about, and that includes the judgments about yourself. So take any false judgments about you, and put that shit up on the shelf. It no longer serves you. Coming in for Gemini. Taurus, I'm sorry. Coming in for Taurus. I apologize. But I'm feeling that Gemini energy. So maybe Gemini too. Um, or maybe you're a Taurus Gemini. And this message is for you. Heartache. What's hurting you today? Um, did somebody shoot an arrow at you? Did a poison arrow just come flying your way? Was it something someone did or something that they had to say? What kind of hurt has come your way? Or maybe you're overcoming this hurt. You pulled out your arrow. You've gotten all the poison out of your bone marrow. And now it's time for you to rise. Let's see what this card across from you has to say with your sister signs divide and eyes. There's a malevolent teacher. Maybe some type of like evangelical preacher. Okay. A narcissist who wants followers, not a teacher who's trying to help teach a student and help them, you know, be independent and such. You know, this malevolent preacher type person wants too much. Or maybe it's some father energy because this is the father card and maybe your father said something that hits you really hard. 
and he is upside down. So maybe you have a deceased father that's hanging around Taurus and you can feel that pain. Well, they've come around again. They're going to help you take it away. Gemini, here's what your card has to say. You've got the emperor, the future emperor, and his bow is pointed this way. Okay, upright, things are usually really tight, and he's got his bow pointed at the right sight. But when it's down below, uh, his poison or his arrow may have a poisonous flow. Okay, maybe you accidentally shot a Taurus. <laughs> Ding! Okay, maybe there's something you did to yourself where you shot yourself with an arrow and it came all the way back and got you in your 12th house. Look up 12th house energies. Uh, Gemini, look up your sign in your 12th house and then also figure out what that sign is in your 12th house and that's going to apply too. Interesting. That's kind of what they want you to focus on. All right. But also look at where this card is pointing to. Whichever way Siddhartha points, that's where it's going. And this is pointing towards healing. This is the card five of wand or five of swords, five of Vajras. And this was a battle, a mental battle. Okay, maybe you're healing from a mental battle. You're upside down in a mental battle that you're about to heal from. You've been focusing on this, trying to heal mental scars and such. Okay, maybe these mental scars have been too much, Gemini. Okay, and they cause your arrow to, you know, maybe not quite fly. Or maybe when they fly, they hit somebody in the eye and they cause the wrong person to die when that's not what you wanted. And maybe that person is you. Are you shooting your arrow at you too? Okay, it is coming around, ding, and hitting you right in the back. Are you getting caught up in your own mental attack? We're going to go into cancer. Yo, what's going on? What kind of mental battle do you have? This is like some serious shit. Looks like it's time for us to maybe get fit. Get fit in the mind. Raja yoga, I see. That's going to help your mentality. What have you been focused on, Cancer? When we look at the card behind you, and we look at the card across from you, oh shit, there's a demon. Uh-oh. Maybe you're healing from this demonic flow. Okay, this could be outside influences, this card has to show, or maybe thought patterns and fears. Because look, it's Rahu, and he's trying to bring these tears. Maybe tears and fears that have been plaguing you for the past 10 years. Or maybe 15, 10 plus 5. We got your sister card here all up in this jive. <laughs> Interesting. Because we come into Leo and you've got this feminine mastery of the mind. This mental flow. And then look across from you. There's your daughter, too, or maybe your inner child. Hmm. Huh. Leo, mother-daughter energy, here is what I see. And this mother-daughter energy, there's this Leo. Aquarius. Mother-sister energy. Interesting. Or mother-daughter energy. Interesting. Very interesting. Some family energy there. But here, this is Lokana. She is the Queen of Swords. And here, you, Leo, are you having to be the mother? And your mother's acting like a child. Maybe she's getting kind of wild and you're having to be a Queen of Swords and cut her off. <clears throat> That's some heavy shit. That's some specific message for someone. Oh, it looks like you're going to deal with someone who's not too fun. Or maybe you're having to teach someone. You're having to be the mature person. Leo. Okay. And also this is about listening. Okay. Listening today. For this clairvoyant awakening that's coming your way. There's this teacher-student energy also I see. Okay. Taurus. Maybe a deceased teacher is around you also. Coming in for Virgo, which is where the moon is in. It's a Gibeous moon. You got Amitabha, but he is reversed. They said I was going to be using the pendulum on, on, on these upside down cards with the men today. And they were wanting me to ask a question about this card. And we're going to set it here on the mandala. And use the mandala as a spirit board and asking all the Buddhas 
is this. Counterclockwise is a no. Clockwise is a yes. And look, it's already looking into. They're looking into it. They're looking into it, sweeping through. Is this a person that is dead or a person that is... Is this a person that is dead? He's trying to move. He's trying to move. There's a person that is dead that's going to be coming into your head. They're a fire sign type energy. Okay, that's what this is first and foremost about. A person that is dead, that is a fire sign type energy, a father type figure. All right. That's what they're talking about in this card tonight. So there you have this masculine fire sign energy that is around you today. Okay, we got this Scorpio full moon coming our way, and that's a death moon. All right, there's a... I've been hearing a lot about deceased fathers, deceased grandfathers, deceased uncles. Virgo. Virgo. You've got a deceased... Look, it's going really big now. So it's like deceased uncle. Okay, Virgo, you got this deceased uncle type energy that is around you, I see. Look, it's stopping now. Yep, they said we got it. All right, so this is a card about the dead. You know, of course, watch out for some kind of narcissist type of player energy. You know, we always got to watch out for that whenever this card shows up. But this is specifically about the dead coming around. Oops, let me turn this this way because it's upside down. Yep, and they're like, yes, here we go. Okay, so your your uncle, a, a dead uncle, father type energy is in today. And they're bringing some messages um, your way, especially having to deal with the moon. So during the moon, and because of this moon, they're able to come in really quick. Look at that, look at that. See how it's going really fast? Okay, so I'm channeling a message from this dead person. They're coming in really fast. Um, and do your moon, do your moon stuff, all right? Because the moon's going to be in these next few signs for a hot minute. For a hot minute going into Scorpio and then going on into um, Sagittarius and such. Okay, the moon's going to be uh, in these signs. And there's going to be a lot of death energy because Scorpio is a death house. So there's a lot of dead people coming around. This is a fire sign person. They're very jolly. They're very loving. They're very happy. Okay, they have a fire sign energy. They don't have to be a fire sign. They come with peacocks, garudas. They're coming to change poison to medicine. Their message is done. We're going to come in now for uh, Libra. Libra, you've got a deceased relative also okay now of course first and foremost we're going to warn watch out for this unstable earth sign person if they show up in the 3d realm but this is all about you've got a dead person also okay so here is this possible earth sign type energy okay taurus virgo capricorn okay uh aries leo sagittarius back there in virgo taurus leo cap uh, taurus virgo capricorn here Earth sign type energy. They're coming in with the spirit horses. Um, <clears throat> and this is a fatherly, grandfatherly, uncle type energy also. Okay, yes. And they're coming in with the flow. You've got a deceased person around you. Okay, every Virgos, Libras. Okay, you've got a lot of deceased energy. It's just like dead people. And they're like, yeah. You know, so just... They're really wanting us to focus on that, and they're gonna, you're gonna feel them. Ver, uh, Libra, you're gonna feel them, like literally touch you with um, Virgo. You're going to know, you're just gonna know that they're around, okay? That you're knowing your clear cognizance is gonna get opened by them. They're gonna work on your clear cognizance, and with, um, with Libra, they're gonna work on your clear sentience. Now we come into Scorpio, and we have the upside down Hierophant. Now, are we talking about a dead person here? They're like, no, specifically for Scorpio, no. We're talking about some kind of narcissist piece of shit teacher. Yes. Okay, so, <sighs> all right, I was getting this message, you guys, about um, teachers. And they were like, you're going to give this with the Hierophant. I was going to make a post. I started to make a post during a DMX song. DMX turned. He stopped the post. He stopped the Facebook post. I had it all typed out and everything. It was beautiful. So here we go, you guys. Some teachers... Or some instructors, here we go, okay, this is the father card, the hierophant, the pope, the spiritual teacher. So we'll say that some instructors are leaders, and they want followers. And by followers, I mean people that they can lead, sheep, that are going to blindly follow them. This is a narcissist-type energy. This could be an evangelical type preacher. This could be one of those spiritual narcissists who's like, oh, well, I'm better than you because I can do this om and om and blah, 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 and love and light and uh, uh, and blah. All right? Watch out for those types. Don't be that type. Don't be the leader. All right? Trying to make everyone do what you say. 
I'm trying to get a bunch of sheep. Okay, this is a message for you, Scorpio, especially if you're in a lead or management type position. Do not be the leader. People don't want to be led. People are tired of being led. Be the teacher. This instructor is a teacher, and a teacher has students. Okay, the leader has a codependent narcissist relationship because they are both on the same frequency. The, the narcissist and the codependent exist on the same frequency. That's why they attract each other. Just as the teacher and the student exist on a higher frequency of interdependence and whatever the opposite of narcissism is. I should have looked it up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Big lesson for Scorpio. Okay? Be the instructor that is the teacher that helps guide his students towards independence through an interdependent relationship and helps their students grow so they can get into their own flow. Don't be the leader who just wants followers that praise him and worship him or her. Sagittarius. New lotuses are growing in your pond. You planted some amazing seeds and now they're growing. Okay? This goes along with the moon. Okay? You're very close to achieving your goal. We'll get back into that. You've got that moon energy. Okay? Look, the moon is with the king of lotuses, the Buddha of lotuses, and here's the ace. That's the next one up. Okay, going around full circle. Seeds have been planted, and you are very close. Your lotuses are blooming. Keep it going. This is your wand. Okay, this is fire magic for you. So actually, fire magic is going to really work for your manifestations. Okay, but, and there's this dead father energy that is around, that is looking around, because we've got three dead fathers in a row when it comes to this protection against this malevolent infection. The card before you, the card after. Okay, now watch out. Here's this narcissistic teacher. And then here's this demon. Look look around you. Now, in order to protect yourself, do not use fire magic. Okay? Use metal magic. Please watch out. Okay? You cannot fight fire with fire. You're going to have to fight metal against all these. All right? You've got seeds planted. Okay? Seeds are planted. Use a magic wand. Crystal wand, possibly. Okay? If you use a wooden wand, do not use fire magic with it. And protect yourself. But seeds have been planted, and there's thing. There are people that are watching you. Malevolent eyes that are watching you. Wait, see this father's supposed to be upside down. Okay, there's malevolent eyes that are watching you. Okay, so watch out, because we go into Capricorn. You got Rahu. Here he is upside down. If he was upright, he'd be Rahu La, but he's not. He's not upright. He's he's not so tight. He's Rahu. He's come to scare you. He's come to go boo. I got you. And he's trying to use all your fears against you. Put malevolent things into your ears. Mess up your sight with things that create fright and terror all through the night. Just use that hand. Say, ah, oh, nah, this ain't right. Use the mudra of fearlessness against him tonight. Also call in the dakinis. They're going to help with this fight. Because look, there's a dakini that has your back and she's going to help you with this malevolent attack. And even across from her, there's a Sakti too. And they're all watching over you. Okay, so... Watch out for the things that your night terrors bring. Okay? You are greater than your fears. And remember this mantra. You have no power over me. Repeat it again. You have no power over me. Repeat it again. You have no power over me. Ten times. I want you to repeat this mantra today. And it'll make this demon go away. Coming in, we have this Sakti of Vajras in Aquarius. This is a page of swords. This is your energy. This is learning. Maybe about clairvoyance. Okay? Because across from this page, across her way, we have this Sakti, and that's the feminine mastery coming in, okay? Maybe you're going to learn something from an older air sign today. They're going to bring a, a really nice message your way. It's going to help you cut all of the demon hordes away, because look around you. Oh, my God. There's all kinds of infestation, too. You got an upside-down demon. You got Rahu. You got the devil. 
girl, raise that sword. You got lessons to learn about these demon hordes. So be careful with what kind of lessons you learn today. There's a lot of malevolence that's coming your way, Aquarius. Raise your sword. And just, you know, there's malignant demons and there's malevolent demons. Okay? And look, the devil's upright. He usually has a message that's kind of tight. <laughs> Maybe he's going to come help you with this fight against this demon. that just be scheming. Maybe he's getting in on his territory and he's like, no, nah, I don't think so. Or maybe you're having to get Rahula, the king, and his malevolent enforcers that he brings. Because remember, Rahula is a member of the mob. And Padmasambhara, Padmasambhara tricked him. Padmasambhava tricked him into enlightenment. So maybe that's what you have to do. Get these demons and devils to work for you. That's some serious magic. Looks like you got something to learn. Before you get caught up in these flames and get burned. Coming in for Pisces. Mm. At 21, 21 on the time. Mm. We got the devil coming in with some kind of funky rhyme. What's going to be holding you back today? Mm, Pisces, I've come your way. Are there addictions? Are there afflictions? Are you holding on to thoughts? Is there somebody that pissed you off and maybe you should have fought <laughs> or maybe you shouldn't have? Here we have the devil card and man, he's looking really hard with his beady ass eyes. And this minions who've come in their human disguise. So watch out all around you, please Pisces today. Because across from you, there's a narcissist coming your way. Maybe it's an ex that you're addicted to. Or maybe it's this player that knows exactly how to play you. And you're going to have to watch out tonight. Okay, emotions are running high. You're very tr close to achieving your goal, but make sure it's not a devilish one. Don't let this narcissist in. They're going to mess up all your fun. And don't you be that devil today. Let's make this energy go away. All right, Pisces? Yo, now three cards came out for the bonus today. The first one was karma. The ancestors are bringing your way. And here is the horse. The horse, of course. Pubera has been coming around a lot with his horse and his numbers. He's a spirit animal. He's a spirit guy, you know, bringing all of this stuff. And here we got to raise our swords. Things are about to get tough. So here the ancestors are reach, they're, they're helping us over an obstacle. Maybe someone's trying to cut us. Here's that devil. Here's that narcissist. Okay, here's someone else who's not good. There's someone else who's not good. There's someone else who's not good. Even this person here is not good. Okay, this judgment card, not good. All right, well, like when these are like actual people that are around you that are close to you. All right, so look, you're raising your sword, which is like raising your uh, clairvoyance. You're really opening your eyes against these spies. All right, you've raised your sword to call in your spirit guides, giving them directions. All right, because in the next card that came out, it fell out this way. And here's the sun and the moon. So we go from a one to a two. From an ace of swords to an ace of jewels. We were talking about protection, metal, and crystals. Holding crystals in your hands, raising your swords. Use your athames. Use your vajras. All right. What's an athame? It is a spirit knife. And a spirit knife will help take away that strife. Use an athame. Use a vajra. Put some crystals in the hands. We got crystals all over the place. All right, we got some crystal Reiki going on. Get your crystal meditation. There's a lot of work that's coming in, all right? The, the ancestors, they're bringing in new insights. And it's going to bring a heavy workload on everybody, okay? And that's okay. We got this. This weekend, these next two days especially, two, three days, one, two, three, heavy workloads are coming in with a lot of divine insight. 
that the spirit guides and the ancestors have brought our way, and our spirit guide animals too. The stars, the sun, the moon, all of them. Okay, they're bringing in a massive amount of divine insight, clairvoyant awakening, and it's going to be kind of earth shaking and it's going to bring a lot of work our way, a lot of information. Okay, this energy, boom, but also use your crystal magic against things that are tragic. All right, Ra uh, Mara shows up. See, it's like a, he's like shooting some beams out, right? Okay. Rahu shows up. Shoot him with some beams. Use your crystals. Put them in your hands. Get to work. Coming in. Buddha wisdom, Shakti power. Okay. Cool. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. Really? Rahu comes on with this ten heads and thousand eyes? All right, he's come to fierce planetary deity of the sky. Confront the things that scare you most. This is about overcoming our fears, you guys. He, this, this is his message. He's like, you, every, he's like, too many people are upside down in fear. And it's time to overcome them. Look at that. He has come in today. Pointing his arrow at his old self. Okay? His old self was a real asshole. And actually, he didn't like being that. He didn't like always being on the attack. So when Padmasambhava came and hit him with his wild man enlightenment, it helped him change his ways. And this is Rahu actually coming in and he's confronting his own fears. He's confronting what scares him the most. And what scared him the most? Himself. That's what Rahu has to say today. As we confront our fears, we're really confronting ourselves. It may show up in other people. It may show up in outside situations cause us to kind of freeze with hesitation but he's here to show us that we can overcome them all right these spirits coming in to help us overcome our fears these spirits are sometimes demons and they have amazing messages for us to hear he is he went from malevolent from malignant demon to malevolent he changed his ways and you can do that too pisces <laughs> And all you other people on the wheel. And all these energies in which we have to deal. You can do this. Okay? Wow, amazing. The fierce planetary deity of the sky has come our way. Twice today. Look at that. We'll place them on top of the mandala. Okay, let's get out the moonology card. Oh yeah, because the moon's been staring at us really hard. We're in a... Gibeous moon, you're very close to achieving your goal. Don't let your fears overcome you. That's what he's saying. Don't let your fears overcome you. You are very close to achieving your goal. See how the two jewels were pointing right towards the moon? Okay, and he, he has the moon in his hand. So look, point all that energy towards the moon. You're very close to achieving your goals. We're going to attune ourselves now to the moon. The moon attunement is, I know that I am on the right track. Look, they're both pointing their bows in the same direction towards this moon card. All right, Rahula and Siddhartha, they're both pointing their bows. As above, so below. Flip those around and it's still the, they're, they're both working together to overcome fears. It's like Luke going in that cave. We were just talking about this. Luke going in the cave and overcoming his fears. Okay, so now is a good time to review your plans. That's what the moon says. Keep the momentum going as you move towards your dreams. Look at that. You're moving towards your dreams. We're going for it, you guys. Stay focused. Stay focused. It is a good time to start a new project. Go for it. Okay? And you need to get back into good health habits. So you're so close to achieving your goal. And don't let your health throw you off either. Here's that one. Look. You need to get back into good health habits. Damn! Okay? Getting away from the hurt and into good health habits. Gemini. Man, Karsh is calling me out. Okay? Look at that. Pointing towards that. Gibeous moon. Now remember you guys, we're coming up on that super moon too. Okay, so the moon's also saying, watch out, don't let it drive you crazy. Okay, don't let this new Scorpio moon drive you crazy. We're getting close to achieving our goals. Don't get overcome with fear right at that last moment. Okay, look, there's Rahu. This card here is also about deepest fears. Okay, just like this one is about deepest fears. Manifesting. Okay, and here, this is like 
really overcoming our deepest fears in a very masterful way. And we have to use a lot of love for ourselves. All right. You got it. It starts with a lot of love for ourselves and a lot of love for what we're doing. Okay. You love what you're doing. You're so close to your goal. Don't give up. You're almost at that point of mastery of this creative energy, this creative flow. You got it. You got it. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful message. I love you guys. Clearing it out with Gunta. Nice. All right, you guys, let's do a little meditation really quick. We're almost out of time. I want you to breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. I love you guys. I'll be catching up with you again very soon. Have a great day. Work on those fears. Overcome them. You got this. You got this. Namaste.